I think she just captured the essence of my prayer. Life is not all that, that bad when you have God, right? Uh, it may be difficult, it may be tough, but because God is on our side, life is beautiful. On this uh, new Sabbath, in this new month, we begin a new series called Impact. Look at your neighbor and tell them, Impact. You see, the word impact has a literal meaning. Uh, when you pick up a glass and you drop it and it breaks, that is impact. When you're walking and you bump somebody and you say, yeah, uh, permissi, permissi, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, that is impact. Impact is to hit something. It is to break something. It is to crash into something, but also impact. I said impact. Everybody say impact. Impact also has a figurative meaning. And that means when Pastor Samson preached this morning, you heard the sermon? And he talked about influence. And you say, Lord, I want to be an influencer. Not the one on Instagram or Facebook, but I want to be an influencer for you. That is impact. Man, the song touched me this morning. Oh, the song right now, Sister Ruth, touched me. That is impact. And so for the month of May, I want to talk about impact. Not in the literal sense, but in the figurative sense. Our goal is very simple. Is your life impacting somebody else? When people come across you, when you talk to them, when you greet them, when you interact with them, are they impacted by your life? Because I believe that the life of faith, the what? You're not convincing me that you heard me, so I'm going to give you another opportunity. I believe the life of faith, the life of what? Life. Is a life of impact. The sermon this morning, not this morning, but this power up is put your faith to work. Look at your neighbor and say, put your faith to work. So turn with me to the book of James. James chapter 2. And uh, last month, you know that we dealt with James, but I, I thought that we should deal with James again because James is all about impact. His concept is very simple, Sister Pat. How does your belief affect your behavior? How does what you know affect how you live? Many of us, we know, but we don't actually live. So there is often this great chasm between what we know and what we do because impact is lacking. So James calls himself the slave of God. It's not a demeaning title, Elder Irwan. It is not demeaning. But he's simply saying, I am totally sold for God. I am committed to him. James is a, is a preacher because, Sister Lovely, he says things uh, like this. The one who is a friend of the world is not a friend of God. That's impact right there. He says, the tongue, though small, a little member, but has a great impact. And I, I think many of you can relate that the tongue has great impact. Impact And so James is a powerful book and uh, we're going to look at him again for this month. And I hope that something will happen. James chapter 2 and verse number 14. Kindly turn it there. And when you have it, I want us to stand together to read this passage of scripture. James Ayadua. Hmm? Pasal Dua Ayat Mpadblas. Come on now. Let's read together. Please stand as we read God's word together. James chapter 2 and verse number 14. When you have it, say amen. amen. What does it profit, my brethren and my sistren, if someone says he has faith, but he does not have works? Can faith save him? Uh, if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace and be warmed and filled, 
but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works and I will show you my faith by my works. Verse number 10, number 19. Hey, listen to this carefully. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and shake or tremble. Uh, but you do not know, O oh foolish man, or oh empty man, or oh light thinking man, that faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Well hallelujah that's powerful right there. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise. Was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Put your faith to work. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, your word has been read. It now needs to be preached. I need you. Please. Speak to somebody. Amen. May be seated. Faith alone cannot save you. Wait a minute, Pastor. James John three sixteen, the most famous verse of the Bible says. If anyone believes in God, whosoever believes in, in, in Jesus, that person is saved, believed and it is a done deal. What do you mean that faith alone cannot save me, Pastor? I, I don't get it. Besides, Paul says that we are saved by faith. It is the gift of God. It is nothing to do with us. We, 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 we have nothing to do with it so that Elder Irwin and Pastor Sam, we may not boast. Oh, they're busy over there. They ain't listening to God's word. Listen to James again. James says, What profit is it, brethren, if a man says he has faith, but he does not have works? Can faith save him? So to help us understand what he's saying, he, he presents a hypothetical. A what? He presents a what? I'll say it for you again. A hypothetical. A what? But a real situation. And so he says, if a brother uh, who is in need, who doesn't have uh, food, who is naked, comes to you. And so the situation is like this. A needy Christian, he, he doesn't have food. He's daily makan. And he's naked. And not necessarily that he's really naked, but the, the, the situation is he is like a gymnast. That's the word that James uses, where we get the word gymnastics. So you know gymnasts or gymnasts, they don't really dress up all that well. They only cover the essentials. Are we together? So this brother who is needy, this sister who is needy, comes to James. He, he doesn't have enough clothes. Perhaps his clothes are ripped up. Perhaps the, the shirt is ripped up. Uh, today it is fashionable to wear ripped clothes. Are we together? But this brother, he's not in a, in a fashion contest. He, he needs these clothes and he doesn't have. And so he comes to a believer. He comes to his brother in the faith. And he says, my brother, I need help. So the brother says, oof, you are in need. All right. Hey, brother, okay. Depart in peace. Be warmed and be filled. I want you to know that this brother is a faith-filled brother. This brother 
who has been requested to help has a lot of faith. Look at the answer that he gives to the needy Christian. He, he says, depart in, in peace, be warmed, and be filled. Because the Greek is a little bit vague, I want you to see his response in two ways. How many ways? So the, the, the first way, he is speaking in a past, in a middle voice, okay? In the Greek, the middle voice is uh, you, when you do the action, you do the action for yourself. And so this is what he's saying. Be warmed yourself and fill yourself. My brother, I would like to help you, but you know what the Bible says, everybody got to work, the one who doesn't eat cannot, the one who doesn't work cannot eat. This brother is telling this needy Christian to do their part. Have you tried to apply to go Jack? Maybe they're hiring. I mean, have you tried to uh, apply at KFC? They're hiring. Uh, my brother, uh, take care of yourself. Uh, and so he's telling him, my brother, we got to work for what we get. Diligence is good, right? We, we should work hard, right? So he's encouraging his brother to work hard. Don't be lazy. But there's another way you need to understand him. He, he speaks in the passive voice. And in this sense, he's, he's actually offering him a prayer. He says, no, my brother. Yeah, you know, this month has been very difficult for me, but let me pray for you so that you may be warmed and you may be filled so that God can provide for your needs. <laughs> and he lets him go out the door. So, so this brother has a lot of faith. I want you to understand this brother a, a little bit more. Check what James says about this brother. I want you to get this brother carefully. You see, the brother... This Christian brother has the right theology. What does he have? What does he have? You see, he believes in one God. He's a monotheist. In other words, if he's a seven-day Adventist, he would believe in the Trinity. There is three persons in the Godhead. Uh, his uh, theology is correct. Talk about Sabbath keeping. Oh, he knows that. Talk about returning tithe. Oh, he knows that. The 28 fundamental beliefs, they are in his system. This brother has right faith. This brother has the right theology. But also this brother is very, is very tolerating. He says to him, he says, look, uh, James, I'm the, I'm the kind of brother who believes in, in faith. For you, yeah, it's all about works. We are, I mean, I just emphasize faith and you emphasize works. There is no problem with us. You, know, you like the faith thing? <laughs> that's, your, that's your thing. Uh, you know, today, everybody can believe what they want, right? So this brother is saying, no, no, no. Me, faith, that's what I'm about. You, works, that's what you are about. So this brother, he has faith. He has the right theology, and he's very tolerating. How are we together? This is the kind of Christian he is. And I'm sure that you can relate to this particular brother because you, you believe in faith. You believe in coming to church. You, you believe in the right theology. You, you, you believe in tolerating other people. JCC, ooh, <laughs> is, is a tolerating church. Everybody come here. This is the type of brother we're dealing with. The one who has been asked to help his brother. But this is what James says about him. He says, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Yeah, right theology is good. Being faith filled is good. Being tolerating is good. But if all you do is have faith, if all you do is have the right theology and study the Bible, if all you do is tolerate people, that's not good for you. That is useless faith. That is impactless faith. And my brother, my sister, get me carefully. I want you to understand this, this powerful point. Claims of faith are nothing if they're empty platitudes and beatitudes. Such faith is lazy and lousy and it is not real faith. And we do this. Somebody doesn't have money. We listen to them. We are sympathetic. Our faces even become long. 
We even sit next to them like this. We, 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 we sit closer. We lean over. We listen to them. We pat them on the back. We, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the knee. We pat them on the back. And we say, my brother, you know, God will provide. But perhaps that person came to you because you are the person that can help. And so sometimes we, we listen to people, we, 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 we sympathize with people, but we fall short of taking action. And that faith is lousy and lazy. You see, I need you to understand a very important concept. Faith and works are like the Twin Towers in KL. Uh -huh. Both stand together, both stand at the same height, and both are interconnected. Without the other, it's not possible. And so if your faith does not move you to action, if your faith does not make you do something that is useless faith, that is impactless faith, the life of faith is a life of impact. What is your faith making you do? Is your faith making an impact in the life of other people? No, no, Pastor, come, come on. Huh? You, 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 you don't understand. Uh, this week was so hard. I was busy at the office. Pastor, come on. He, I have a nine to five. I mean, there is a whole lot of matching in Jakarta. I, I have no time to do anything. You'll understand that. Yeah, I, I can understand this week. But what about last week? What about the week before? And so I came up with this concept. I came up with this concept. A workless faith is impactless faith. If it is not doing anything, useless. Let's, let's look at this man a little bit closer because I like to analyze people get deeper into them to really understand the reasons why they do certain things so that when we have understood why they do certain things, we can maybe see where we are and see how we can change. Because what is here often translates, what is in the head often translates to the heart and what is in the heart translates to the hands. You see, this brother misunderstood the relationship between faith and works. He didn't understand that these two things, faith and works, they are twins. They are partners. Uh, they are one in the same thing. Without the other, it doesn't exist. So he misunderstood. And I saw this very interesting uh, thing that was happening. There was a social experiment going on. What was going on? A social experiment. What was going on? E. All right, I'll let you go on that one. So there was a group of uh, people walking around in the street, and uh, they were smoking, right? And so a bunch of kids, they were sent out into the street to talk to these people that were smoking, says the divina. So somebody's smoking, and then a kid comes by and says, you know what? You should not be smoking because smoking is bad for your body. The guy says, yeah, I know. Leave me alone. Some people said like that. And then they switched the experiment. The kids went out and they were asking now for a cigarette. And you know the same people say, no, you're young, you're too young, you should not be smoking. Are we together? A lot of times we, 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 we know it, but we don't do it. And when we see other people doing that thing which we think is not right, even though we're not doing it, we get mad and we get upset. The other day, I was so shocked. I was working out with this guy in the gym. I mean, the guy was really going hard, and he was encouraging me and, and stuff like that. And as soon as we finished the workout, he dressed up and all this. He went outside, sat down, lit up. Uh, um, I don't know what the cigarettes are called here, but uh, wherever I come from, they're called Marlboros. He lit it up, and he was smoking. In my mind, I'm saying, well, it doesn't make sense. On coffee day, people run and run and run. And then after that, I mean, they're eating a whole lot of gorengan and all these things. Uh, come on now, ladies. We know that this stuff is bad. We know that it is not good. But we, we don't do it. That's because we misunderstand the relationship between faith and works. A lot of times we think, a lot of times we feel that, uh, you, you know what, I, I know it, but yeah. 
stop short of taking action. Many times, believe me, you will come to a Bible study, you will attend a worship service, you will give money for Pal Palu victims, but going to Palu, e yeah. Huh? So a lot of times we, we love the intellectual, cerebral, conceptual, mental elements of faith. But when it comes into the active action, the energy producing elements of faith is, yeah, Lord. Lord, I want you to give me somebody. I want you to give me a husband. I want you to give me a wife. I want you to give me a job. But we don't socialize, we don't serve in church, we don't put up applications. You tell me, are you going to get the job? Do you expect God to magically drop a job, to magically drop somebody for you? Hey, my brother, my sister, you got it mistaken. You see, faith puts you into action. Faith is the engine that moves the car called faith, called works. In fact, the word James uses... For works is the word where we get energy. The word, the word energy. You know what energy? E I can't even say these words, Lord. Give, give me, me the strength. You know what energy is? You know what that is? Energy is putting effort into it. You know when you're putting energy in running, you are sweating and you're breathing really hard. When you put energy into your work, you, are, you go to work on time and you leave late. When you're putting energy into your faith, you wake up early, you read the Bible, you, 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 you attend church, you, you, you do things for God. When you put energy into a relationship, you text and, and you call. When you put energy, you put effort. So James is saying, if your faith doesn't make you put energy, it doesn't put you to work, eh, that's a problem. So my brother, the one we are looking at, he misunderstood the relationship between faith and works. But the real issue, the bigger issue now, he did not only misunderstand the relationship between faith and works, it's because of the faith that he had did not impact him. He misunderstood it because the faith he had didn't impact him personally. It was dead to him. Not only to the brother he didn't help, it was useless uh, to him. Uh, you see, the brother comes to him, and I don't know his socioeconomic status. I don't know if he was a CEO. I don't know if he owned a, five, uh, a 500 fortune company. I don't know. But the fact that this brother came means that he was in a position to help. Mm-hmm. But because in his life, it was only about himself, it was only about a self-centered perspective, that is why he didn't help. Isn't it true? Somebody's asking you for money and the first thing you think about is, man, I have bills. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, I need uh, 500,000. Hey, bro, you know, I really want to help, man, but uh, I got these bills, man. Um, in fact, uh, I got to help out my family. When people are asking us for help, we always put the needs of our own selves before others. We, we think about ourselves. And, and don't mean as a, mean as a, misunderstand me. We can't help everybody. We are not, Bill, Gates, Bill Gates can't even do that. But we can help somebody. Perhaps helping somebody is not only giving resources. Helping somebody is saying, my brother, you need to go to Parsa Baru. I will go with you. We'll use my car. I will pay for the Gojek. I will pay for the Grab. We're going to go there. We're going to talk to that, whoever they are. And I'm going to make sure that you apply. I'm going to make sure that it happens. That is what it means to help somebody. Sometimes we just need to spend an hour to listen to them. Sometimes we need to take their laundry to be washed. Sometimes we need to go to Grand Lucky and walk through the aisles, not buy a gorengan, but we buy our vegetables and sometimes. So the reason is he didn't understand the relationship between faith because there wasn't an impact of that faith in his heart because he was still self-centered. He was not willing to help. And the real reason is that he lacked love. 
He lacked love. There was a love lacking in him. That is why he didn't extend that helping hand. That is why he misunderstood the relationship between faith and works. Here is an impact moment. What moment? What moment? Here's an impact moment. Listen to this, my brother and my sister. A working faith works by love, lacking in a workless, impactless faith. Love is a driving principle. It is a thing moving a person who has faith. Oh, pastor, I don't understand. Well, let me help you to understand. And so James uses two examples, Sister Pat and Sister Lovely, to help us to understand what a working faith impacted by love does. Listen to this. Was not Abraham, our father, justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Let, let, let's go back. We heard about Abraham a couple weeks ago. This man, Hear me carefully. This man takes his only son and brings him to the mountain to sacrifice him. His only son. I don't know about you, but for me, Abraham is exhibiting that he loves God more than his own son. Oh, you didn't get that. So let me put it another way because you would have said amen. You see, he felt and he could see that for me, God is number one. My son, my only son, that, that's not important. What is more important is for me to obey my God. I love God more than my son. And therefore, if God tells me sacrifice him, I will do it. It is painful. It is hurt. But God said it. And so I will do it. And so Abraham loved God more than anything in this world. And by the way, listen to this carefully. If you love God more than any person in your life, you automatically love the person. Oh, you didn't see that. Ha, ah, my, 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 my sister, let me make it clear. If the brother loves God more than you, you're safe. Brothers, if she loves, more, she loves God more than you, you're safe. Husband and wives, if you love God more than the spouse, the spouse is safe. Oh, you didn't get that. It's powerful. Uh, we think by being more committed to God, we are hurting family. No, no, no. They, it's the other way around. Because when you love God more, what God does is he teaches you how you should love the person you are with. He teaches you how you should handle family time. He teaches you how you should uh, take care of them. And so the person who loves God more. The person who they love, who they love, is safe. And so Abraham sacrifices his son because he loved God more. And so when faith works, it works because he loves God more. Okay, the Bible says I need to give money to the poor. That's what God said. And because I love God, I'm going to give money to the poor. The Bible says, uh, do your best to serve the Lord. Because I love God, I'm going, to, I'm going to do that. And so when our love for God is number one, we follow what God is saying. And when people come around us, we're simply doing what God said. And hasn't it occurred to you that the poor, the people who don't have money, they're also God's children? And when you actually help them... <laughs> You are helping God. You know, when you visit the poor, guess who you are visiting? Jesus. When you visit the sick, guess who you are visiting? Jesus Christ. Because that person who you are helping is a child of God. You see, Jesus, in the last day, he's not going to ask you, how many doctrines did you believe? How many? Can you tell me all the 28 fundamental? No, he's, gonna, he's not going to say that. Uh, did you visit the sick? No, no, Lord. Uh, uh, I, I didn't. Actually, that was me. And so when we love God more, then our faith will work. Second example is the example of, 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 of Rahab. See, Abraham, that guy, he's a... Uh, Religious guy, you know, he's a spiritual guy. So it is expected for him to do that. Are we together? But Rahab, you know about Rahab? <laughs> this sister was a prostitute. And so these brothers come to her by night 
and they need help. They need a house to stay in. And and, and in her mind, she's thinking to herself, I'm sure she's probably thinking, if I help these guys out, my king is going to be mad and my people are going to be upset at me. But I love God. I love God. God is more important to me. And therefore, I'm going to stick my neck out for them and help them. And so when love is the actuating and the moving principle, our faith is going to work. And so if you're not working, if your faith is not moving you to act, it simply means that you haven't been impacted by that faith. Love is lacking in your heart. So it brings me to this important impact moment. Listen to this, my brother, my sister. A working faith works out our salvation. Oh, pastor, come on now. Break it down, break it down, break it down. I'm, I'm going to. But I want it to sink in, yeah? Uh, Sister Audi, I want it to sink into your system. A working faith works out your salvation and my salvation. Oh, pastor, come on now. Yeah, it does. Let, let, me, let me break it down to you. The, the, the Bible says when uh, Abraham sacrificed his son and Rahab was willing to help out those soldiers who came at night, they were justified by works. Oh, wait, wait a minute, Pastor. Come on now, slow it down. We are justified by works? I thought we are justified by faith. James is not talking about that moment when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, right? When we give our life to Jesus Christ, we are justified. Brother Coven, when we give our life to Jesus Christ, we are justified. If a murderer kills somebody, are we together? And they say, Lord, I'm sorry, they're forgiven. Like they've never committed murder. And if they die that day, they're going to go to heaven. But here's the problem with you and me. You and me, when we have given our life to Jesus Christ, we don't die right away. We still have a life to live. Are we together? And, and so I want you to understand this very carefully. It's important. This is, this is going to revolutionize your thinking. You see, Abraham believed God. I actually have to go to that. Abraham believed God 30 years before he sacrificed his son. How many years? I don't hear you, church. How many years? It was 30 years that he believed in God. And when he believed in God, at that moment, he was justified. Like he had never committed a sin. But the time he is sacrificing his son, 30 years has passed by. The Bible is simply saying Abraham lived a life of faith. And because of his life of faith, at the end of that time, then he was justified. If that made sense, can you say amen? Mm, it didn't make sense. You would have said amen. If it made sense, amen. No, it didn't make sense. I'm not convinced. So I graduate college, uh, graduate school, and I'm enjoying the moment. Man, I'm, I'm a graduate. It's been hard. It's been tough. And I finally crossed the finish line. I'm, I'm holding my diploma, and I'm saying, people are saying, congratulations. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I did it. Hey. Wise man, old man comes to me. He says to me, Henry. Congratulations. Welcome to the school of lifelong learning. I said, wait, 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 what do you mean? He said, yeah. You need to study harder now because you know more. In fact, if you haven't recognized it, you probably don't know as much as you think you know. You see, when you believe in Jesus, you start a new journey with him. Are we together? But that's simply starting the journey. The journey has to continue. Are we together? And so our works, our works justify us because it shows that we truly believed in God. So the person whose faith is not working, they need to go back to the beginning point. But the person who is working is showing that, yeah, what I really did, believing in Jesus, is actually changing my life. And so maybe I was a prostitute. Because I believed in Jesus, he has changed my heart. I no longer go on the street. I no longer prostitute. Perhaps I used to lie. I, I no longer do that. I'm interested in telling the truth. Perhaps I was lazy. I no longer do that. I am diligent. I plan my day. I worked it out and so that is what faith does. Amen? Amen. 
The life of faith simply is demonstrating that Jesus died for your sins. That something has changed in your heart and therefore our works justify us. To demonstrate what has taken place in our hearts. It's not how much faith you have that counts. But it's how much of that faith is working that will save you. It brings me to this important point in the message. Pastor, how do I put my faith to work? How does that actually happen? That my faith starts to actually move. Allow me to tell you a story. The great emperor of France, Napoleon Bonaparte, maybe you know him, maybe you don't. One day, he is on his horse and he was handed papers to read. And so naturally to read these papers, he had to let go of the bridle on the horse. You know how horses are controlled. That's, that's what we call the bridle. He had to let go of the bridle so that he could read the papers. But when he let go of the bridle, in the mind of the horse, it, it, it almost felt like the horse was being commanded to do something. And so the horse lifted up the front legs and the emperor was about to find himself in the dirt. Maybe break his back like Reeves, the old Superman, if you know who I'm talking about. But a corporal, a low-ranking soldier, sees that the emperor is in danger. He throws his musket on the ground and he runs to the horse and he holds the bridle. And the horse comes down. The emperor looks at this low-ranking soldier. Of what? You know, he says... Thank you, Captain. And the cap and the, this low-ranking soldier says to the Emperor, Sire, Emperor, what captain am I? He said, Captain of my guards. And so the low-ranking soldier realizes that his status has just been changed from a low-ranking soldier to a captain. He throws his mas musket and he marches to where the captains were standing. And he stands with the captains there. And some of the captains are saying, hey, what? why are you standing here? The emperor said, I'm a captain. My brother, my sister, God says, you are my sons and my daughters. I have given you the Holy Spirit. I have given you power. But many of us don't accept that. We don't go and join the captains. We go back to the soldiers. God says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. We don't leave that prayer feeling that we are wise. We go, okay, I need to read a self-help book. What? My brother, my sister, when your faith works, it takes God at his word and moves on. God said it, I believe it, that's what that matters. And so when your faith is working, it is not presumption. You don't get on a gold jack and say, okay, I'm going to test God to see if he loves me. And then you jump off while the gold jack is, is, is going fast. No, that's presumption. But you say, okay, there's a lot of matches. I am led, late, but this gold jack is going to get me to where I need to go. So you get on the gold jack. The Lord says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Okay, me? I already have my wife. All I need to do is serve a little more, socialize a little bit more, and I'm going to have it. So you put your faith to work when you base it on God's word. And <laughs> that word is good enough for you. Stop praying. But take God at his word and move on and see wonders. Don't go back to the low ranking soldiers. You're a captain. God has changed you. Your status is different. Jump. Take a step of faith. 
perhaps you need to apply for that promotion. Do it. Pray about it. Lord, I need this promotion. Go and apply. Lord, I need to get healthy. I'm going to start going to JCC Run Club. Go. JCC Fit, go. Lord, I need a degree. Apply. I don't have money. Give me a scholarship. Apply for the scholarship. Lord, me and him are not talking. Pray about it. Pick up the phone. No, it's going to be hard. I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be awkward. It doesn't matter. Pray about it. Call the person. The word of God gives you the confidence. Lord, this sexual urges and temptation, they're so hard. I can't overcome. Hmm. Okay. There's no temptation that has come upon me. That is not common to any man. Oh, but God will give me a way to escape. Hmm. Sexual temptation. Get out of my way. God says, get out of my way. That is putting your faith to work. We are oftentimes spiritual wimps because we doubt God's word. Abraham is told by God, sacrifice your son. Okay, God. Daddy, where are we going? To the mountain. Where is the animal? God is going to provide. That man is moving because he knows God will really, really provide. So put your faith to work. Some of us, Putting our faith to work is helping the needy. That brother and that sister on your street, give them a little makan. Perhaps maybe they don't need makan. They need a job. Help them to figure it out. Put your faith to work. My brother and my sister, to love God is to love people. If you don't love people, you don't love God. If you don't love God, it shows that faith hasn't impacted you. Put your faith to work. Let it show that Jesus has really come into your life. Let it show that you're delivered. You're no longer a sinner. You're a saint. It doesn't matter who and whatever, whoever, whichever, however. It doesn't matter who they are. You are a child of God. You are a king. You are a queen. You're going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. You have to live by that. You see, when people see you like that, you're going to impact people's lives. Mama, my lady, man, you're always happy. What is it with you? I need your secret. Ah, hey. Actually, you can have it. It's called Jesus. My brother, you know, when you gave me that 500,000, My bank account was zeros. Impact. Man, when you visited me, my own family didn't even visit me. They didn't even call me. But, but you came. You, you got on a, on a gold jig and you rode all the way to, to uh, Bogor. I don't know if you can go that far with a gold jig. But you, you came. And, yeah, my brother, nobody else came. You came. Impact. When we put our life, our faith to work, impact happens. The life of faith is a life of impact. Putting your faith to work impacts you because it works out your salvation and it impacts those around you. Pastor, I need to put my faith to work. I need to put my faith to work. I don't know how, but I need you to show me how. This week, I want to put my faith to work. Anybody, any takers? Any takers? I'm gonna make you do something different today. Every head is bowed and every eye is shut. I want you to tell God, Lord, I want to put my faith to work. Teach me how. Talk to God, my brother, my sister. Talk to him. 
for this moment. Almighty God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for impacting us with your love. Many of us have prayed today that we want to put our faith to work. We want to take action, not to be saved, but because we are saved. My brothers and sisters, Lord, they need you to enlighten them in how to put faith to work. Please, oh God, do that for them. May this week be a different life. May this week be a different experience of a life of faith impacting those around him, impacting those around her. Heavenly Father, we want to impact others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so Lord, we're going to give back what is yours. And it is my humble prayer that Lord, you'd help us to give with our whole hearts so that somebody, because of what we have given, may be impacted by the gospel. So, Father, into your hands we commit ourselves. Into your hands we commit our lives. In the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Amen.